Hello and welcome to episode 6 of my modded Minecraft Let's Play. As usual, I've done a little bit of work on the house between episodes. And what I'm doing today is the liquefaction process. I have it pretty much set up, but I kind of want to show that to you. The storage method for the liquid, I have that set up as well. And of course, I'm going to have to expand it as I get more liquids to work on. But since it's pretty heavily using uh, Steve's factory manager, I don't want to actually do that on camera because it took me hours upon hours. It took me an entire full day of of using the GUI and learning processes and such to get it working the way it is. And even as it is, one of the things that had been working yesterday is no longer working today, and I'll point that out when I show it to you. I did automate the XP, don't really need to explain too much about that, but I'll give it a little run over. Powered tools I would really like to do, but for that I need Enderium. And I'd like to start mechanism process. Modern Warfare is not Call of Duty, it's the Ancient Warfare mod which you see up here. I've done a little bit of work with it so far. I've completed some stuff in the research queue. I'm currently working on mining. And uh, I had two books. My second one disappeared. I don't know why. So there's that. I did put a witch's oven in here, trying to get Exhale the Horned One and some other stuff. So uh, working on that, I do have a Philosopher's Stone. It is nice. I was able to use that to get each of the basic Minecraft trees, the jungle indication and so on. So I got them down here, but I'm not like mass producing them. I switched my wood farm over from dark oak to great wood. So it's currently doing great wood because the dark oak trees kept punching holes in the ground. And the final straw was when it it built a dark oak tree that wiped out my harvester itself, so I lost the harvester, the upgrade, and had to completely restart the farm in order to get it working again. Automated XP processing, I still need to make a few of these tanks, which is why I have obsidian on me. I was in the middle of doing that when I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start this. So what it does is the autonomous activators in the back, if you're not familiar with how this works, they're powered, and uh, they're powered. These are some cable facades and or conduit facades and they click these and when they click these it pops the berry off which is automatically collected by the vacuum hopper here. The vacuum hopper puts them out into the activator which clicks the berry which puts an XP orb out and the vacuum hopper sucks that back up and puts it out through the pipe into the tank and then I can just right click the tank to get XP. So it's up to 10,000. It had 2,000 when I started. Yay. Ow. I'm a... I keep doing that. I don't know why. Yeah. So this thing up here is where I put it in. I just click store 10 or store all. Because I keep dying, and every time I die, I lose 20 to 30 levels that I haven't been able to store. So I put this in place to be able to do that. I did successfully make four Enderium because it took less shiny metal than I thought it did. So I, I've been holding off on it. I've been wanting to make the Enderium crops for a long time, but I thought I needed more shiny metal. And that's why I have the pulverizer and sag mill built is so that depending on which method I'm using, I can get stuff in that. But in order to do what I wanna do with the power tools, I need a lot more of it. So I'm going to pulverize, where is that? I had it on me. Oh, uh, okay, it looks like I'll have to go back up and get it. I may have just moved it in the chest. I need to pulverize tin and silver and ferrous. So I'm going to, while that pulverizes, I'm gonna head back up and see if I can find my ferrous ore. I don't know how much it'll take because there's a not very big chance of getting shiny metal from pulverizing ferrous ore. But aside from spending days trying to mine it down in the mines, the best way to get it is to use a, use a pulverizer and have a secondary output here. Um, let's see, grindstone doesn't give it, mechanic furnace 
doesn't give it smelting, enrichment chamber, pulverizer, 10% chance for pulverized shiny metal, induction smelter, you have 100% if you have cinnabar, not so easy for me to get, and uh, I, I might be able to do something like that. You can get cinnabar by infusing the cinnabar ore with something else, but if you do that, you can't cook the cinnabar ore into quicksilver, and I might need the quicksilver. And alloy smelter, sag mill doesn't give you shiny ore, so the only real way to get it halfway reliably is through the pulverizer, 10% chance, doesn't require having cinnabar or any of the other stuff, and so that's the way I'm planning on doing it. Put those in there to have that work, and I think I need one of those. As you can see, 47 of these left. I've been pretty busy with my farm. I've harvested it a few times. Oh, I used to have all of them up there. So put that in place, put those in place, and then go get three more. I guess I made something with them. Or put them in. I might have put them in because I needed the room. Oh, that's not good. Apparently at some point it forgot the uh, the imperial essence, and if it if the chest is empty like that, it's not, or if the barrel is empty like that, it's not going to automatically populate that place because it's locked to imperial essence, and it won't put something into a locked barrel. So, like this one, it's got zero, but it's fine. This one has zero, and it's not fine. I, it's some glitch with Steve's or with, with Jabba that every now and then whatever was in there disappears. If it's empty. I should clarify that. <clears throat> so, do I have any shiny metal yet? Please? Two. Yes, I need seven. So, I've already gone through half of my ferris and I don't seem to have it, so I'm going to pull out two of these. This is why I have the Philosopher's Stone, because it has a crafting grid in it. And who knows, down the line, I may want to do something related to the Project E mod. Right now, I'm doing it with the uh, magical crops for a lot of this stuff, because I think they're cool, and it requires a lot more work and effort than simply walking up to the Project E table and saying, I want this, and then having you know, say, one of these systems that's making tens of thousands of cobble an hour giving you free EMC, even if it is only one per cobblestone, you can have it, you, you can make a farm of world interaction upgrades and just pump tens or hundreds of thousands of cobble into one of these, or whatever it is that stores the EMC. I don't know how that mod works, I just know that there are a couple things in it that I thought were interesting, like the... Repair Talisman, repairs nearby players' items, restoring one durability every second. I thought that was kind of neat. And there are a few other things in it that might be kind of cool to have. So I went with it. And it uh, doesn't really have much documentation in game. So let's see, Enderium is a check. I got Enderium seeds. I'll go toss that in the farm while I wait for it to pulverize a little bit more of that ferrous because I do still need to pulverize my three silver ore in order to create the enderium. As you can see I improved the size of this drastically. I got my slime crops back because I found out that with Pam's Harvest Craft there's a jellyfish you can catch and if you, you just put the jellyfish in a crafting grid you get a slime ball and so I was able to get my slime crops back. This is one of the crops that the uh, Indrio farming station destroyed when I had that crop, crops automatically replant themselves option set up with magical crops and it, uh, it ate a number of my seeds because I didn't have backups of them so since then because of that issue I started putting one up here unless I was going to farm enough of them on my own that I also wanted it automated and over here I do need living wood because I'm going to need more 
mono pools. I am looking at moving my way up in Botania soon, but not this episode, because I'm really going to need a better power generation method than a bunch of hydrangeas, even though I have four hydrangea farms set up. This one is putting two of them here, because I'm going to want to set up a... Uh, that's not doing bad. It may be a third full. I'm going to want to put a couple of agricarnations up so that I can get things like obsidian. I need a heck of a lot more obsidian and I'm just not getting it very fast. Time for the fun part. Oh, uh, and get this bag out. Yeah. Or I can do it the faster way. Just kind of crazy doing this. <laughs> Ready for the uh, the magnetic ring that I have. It brings it all straight to me. I was going to make an Ender IO farmer for this stuff, but I needed so much of it so fast that this uh, this Zavisio Ho is so great for it. Shift right click opens it up, the seed bag, and then if I, uh, an egg, okay. Now I'm gonna find more seeds in here. There we go. That may be enough to replant. There we go, that should be. I know that is. So what you do is with the Zavisio seed bag, it plants a 9x9 nine nine for you. In the direction you're facing from the one you point to, so there we go. So much faster than going in and replanting it by hand. And so many more essences than having an Ender.io farmer do it because I would maybe get two stacks out of that field if I was lucky. Now, as far as that goes, I may not, uh, I may not have much luck with getting the Imperial Essence again because, like I said, the Barrel Fort is empty, so it may lock up on making the Crucio Essence. But we'll see when we get there. Maybe since it's had it, it's just a visual glitch. Okay, it looks like it's just a visual glitch. So good to know. And we're done polarizing. We got four all of that and we got four I need seven so I may end up relying on uh, using the watering can and just getting some of that essence because I need a total of 28 enderium and each one of these makes four so pulverize the silver and what I did here power system stable if I were to throw a bunch of say cobble up in here to generate more lava that takes a lot of power at a time and so it drops my power system down because this is reading a battery that's in the back there and as I say here insert bucket to fill with fluid into fluid transposer I'm going to need four of them so I might as well just put all three buckets in and reagent into dropper this thing here or switch to empty mode and transposer will automatically eject fluid back into tank system so since I need enderium put that in there and it automatically gave me a bucket and I can have more than one at a time if I wanted and not have to click back up into here or maybe down the line I will look into setting up some sort of redstone signal and buttons or something like that so that I can just go like you know click and it'll target something under there and have it say alright put an ender but uh, that's something for another day. The other thing I can do with reagents is toss them into this side and for example how it says glowstone level critical put that in there and now it says resident ender level critical so I have it reading each height of tank here for each of the fluids just for giggles because I wanted to see if I could do it. This is not actually a sterling generator <laughs> and that's not liquefied emerald. This is a uh, camouflage sign updater
block. So I'm using the camouflage to make it look like a sterling generator just to make it match here, and then the thing on top matches the power level. If it's kind of in the middle, it turns yellow, and if it's below 25%, it turns red.